All right, now for those of you that don't know who I am, my name's Jeff Williams. With that's Jeff Williams at Com. All right, today I'm gonna teach you about the three different types of rock classes out there. And this is basic geology 101. You're gonna need to know this if you're gonna go out looking for gold. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I want you to click the little subscribe button and of course hit the bell notification so when I make more videos, you'll know when I do that. There are three different types of rocks. Remember this, there's igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. That's it, that's all you get. And this big old Monker here, everything I'm standing on is what? Sedimentary. Come on now, you know that. Each one of these represents a different bedding plane. You can see where the wind and the water has eroded it. You got all this black. See the black right there? They call that desert varnish, son. Manganese oxide. Now, if sandstone is subjected to enough heat and pressure, it becomes what? A metamorphic rock, which is quartzite. And quartzite is one of the few metamorphic rocks that's non foliated. You only got two non foliated. That would be marble and quartzite. Look what I got over here. Are you listening? Listening to me? What you doing up here, son? Well, I'm just hanging around. Are you ready to go? Dig deep, boy. Get up that mountain, boy. I mean, now. Yeah, I don't think he'd like to be in the military at all. All right, now this is a classic example of what? Cross bedding. See the cross bedding? You got layers going this way, layers going this way. And some of them have deep reds in them from heavy iron oxide content. Now you can have gold in quartzite. There's another way that quartzite can form besides heat and pressure which is also a chemical reaction that binds it together. Now, that chemical reaction could be hydrothermal fluids that bind that sand together to create the quartzite. And those hydrothermal fluids can have silver or gold in solution that run through the sandstone. And there's places like in Pioche, Nevada that carry large quantities of silver and gold in their quartzite. You got carbonate hosted gold deposits, which is in sedimentary rock. Carlin Trend is a classic example. You got two different types of sedimentaries, biogenic and classic. All right, we're gonna talk about metamorphic next. What do you know about metamorphic rock, boy? It's been metamorphized through pressure. And metamorphized, metamorphosed. <laughs> meta, 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 meta. Give me some meta, meta said. Wait a minute, there is such a thing as a meta said, meta sedimentary. And you're gonna see that in your USGS reports, meta said and meta volcanics. So your metamorphic rocks. There's two types of metamorphics: regional and contact. I thought it was squeezed and unsqueezed. Yeah. <laughs> California is a good example of regional metamorphism. Contact metamorphism creates things like scarns. Now some of your best gold deposits can be found in metamorphic rock. Greenstone hosted deposits, things like that up in the Arcane Greenstone Belt, which is up in Canada. Metamorphic rock is any rock that has had its structure changed from one rock to another rock, either from heat or pressure. Now you can have rocks that have been partially melted, but unless it's been completely melted, it's still classified as metamorphic. If it completely melts, it's an igneous rock. So how do you determine your metamorphics? Well, they're gonna be folated, son. You can have sedimentary rock, like shell, get really squeezed and become slate. Slate is a metamorphic. It's got some really nice cleavage in there. They call it slaty cleavage. And don't you say nothing, fool. Nothing. And then if it's squeezed a little bit more, it becomes phyllite, and you can start to see the mica formation in there, because most of your metamorphics have mica in them. It's squeeze some more, more it's, pressure and heat, it becomes... It says, ouch. It says, no, it says schist. <laughs> don't say nothing about that. And of course, garnets and gold can form in schist, and then a little bit more it becomes nice. And if it's melted completely, the nice can become granite. Find a lot of good gold hosted in metamorphic rock. Now, like I said, California is a perfect example of regional metamorphism because they got the what? The slate belts there, and that's where a lot of the gold is running through the black slate belt. Carolinas are like that too. They got a slate belt running yeah, through gold there. In Carolina? Yeah, that was. Come on now. <laughs> I didn't know that. Ah, that's where the first gold rush was. I thought I was in California. Ooh, he's gonna drive me crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull your pants up. <laughs> <I'm a> <laughs> All right, what are we talking about now? Metamorphic rock. No, we talked about metamorphic rock. Remember California Ig slate belt? Igneous rock. Igneous rock. Now, igneous rocks are rocks made from fire. That's usually volcanic rocks, huh? Yep. And, you got, and once again, like so. you got two types of those. I know it's a lot to remember. Intrusive and, and exclusive. exclusive. That's right. So, easy way to remember it. It's coming up. If it decides to rupture the top of the skin and come out, that's, that's extrusive. That's, a, that's an eruption. But that well, that's an extrusive rock. And things like basalt, andesite, and rhyolite, things like that. Lava. Now, if that pimple never makes it to the surface like a boil, and it just sits underneath the surface and cools slowly, Slowly, it's intrusive. It's trapped inside. And you got you got granite and you got granite diorite and diorite and gabbro, things like that. If that huge boil doesn't make it up to the top of the skin and it cools real slow, it, it can start to crystallize. As it does so, steam is released off of it and the steam goes up and that steam can carry what? 
cool. That's right, it can. And of course, when it condenses, it starts to turn into hydrothermal fluids. Those fluids can rush up through fissures and fractures because it was coming up, it's cracking everything else. And that's how you get the veins of gold. And that's one way of doing it, or it can leach it out of the surrounding rock. If the pH changes or the or the pressure changes or the temperature changes, then what happens about it, Jack? I have no idea. Well, then it drops it out of solution. Come on, you know that. it gets deposited in the rock. That's how you have these sheeted veins, all the quartz veins that have the gold inside of it. Somebody's got to come and mine it out. And <laughs> That's going to be us. No, you. And of course, this gets into a long, lengthy discussion. Now, when you're talking about gold deposition, you have 12 basic models. Think about that next time you see gold deposition or formation of gold. And you think, oh, it's in white quartz. No, it can be in 12 different models. And those are basic models. That's not all inclusive either. That's just general. All right, so anyway, those are your three rock classes. Sedimentary, metamorphic, metamorphic and igneous. All right, it's part of the rock cycle. It's very important to know this stuff if you're getting into geology, which you should if you want to look for gold. Because it kind of helps. <laughs> it does help a lot, whether you're doing load or placer. If you guys would like to see more out there, I highly recommend that you become a premium patron because we make special videos just for them that goes into great detail on how to find gold, indicator minerals, and have even plants that will show you the way. All right, we're going to get on out of here because you owe me lunch. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon. That way you can be notified when more videos come out. Ding, ding, ding. That's right. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams and who? Nevada Jack. Saying, you want to find that shiny, but you think you're getting too old? You better get off that honey and get out there and get some gold. Take care, everybody.